Okay, now we're going to come back and take a look at how we might go about setting up a sequence for the given night. And for this case, we're going to turn on planning only, here the checkbox. And we're going to link to the software, which is open and underneath, but you'd have to open the sky because we're going to talk to it. And now we're going to come over here to the left and go to the button that talks about session. And you'll notice there, this is actually one that's already been loaded, so there's a whole lot of targets already loaded in here. And we could pick any one of them. And you'll notice over here in this column, the last time I sent some of them were started was in September. Other ones here are in February. So you do have to be a little careful on your sequencing here. Uh, the last one that was run here was an Atlas 41 run. And you can kind of see the times. And one thing you'd want to do is when you start setting up a sequence for the night, is find your first target and then come over here and right click and then you can set your target first target to the current time. Well, I wouldn't want to do that right now um, but what I can do then is I can then start the sequence here. So at night I want to make sure that I set this right as I'm about to start the sequence. How I'm going to do that um, some information that's useful here is coming up to the side here. And this is when, if I look up here in the top, it will tell me when the star is going to rise in the east, so reach 30 degrees above the horizon in the east, when it's going to go over the meridian, and when it's going to set in the west. So that information is useful to me, so I can decide the order of my targets, when I might lose one, if I don't want to run at... Um, specific times, um, specific targets that might go over the pier right away. Might be better to wait for them. You can also see down here is the sunrise sunset along with astronomical twilight. So telling me it tonight at it would be astronomical twilight at 2123. So what I probably want to do here with Atlas 41 is come up in here and program this 21, so I click on it, 23, and then I can come over here, so I change the time to start tonight at that time and hit update, and now with the timing here of the number of observations in a filter and 75 times going through the loop, that would tell me this is going to be observed starting at astronomical twilight and running till 1.40 a.m. But you'll notice a problem here with this target. This target transited at 20, will transit tonight at 20 hours, and it will reach 20, 30 degrees above the horizon at about a little after midnight. So this target wouldn't work very well. So I kind of have to learn how to sequence things such that I can get a better target. So let's, instead of looking at Atlas 41, let's turn it off for tonight and turn on 34 and hit update. Okay, so I'm now going to go back to 34 here, click on this, set it to tonight, set this to 2123 and update. And now something, I can now go back over here now, these times over here, the east and west positions and the transit, those are going to be based on the right ascension declination. Notice this one's a little bit higher declination, so it's going to stay up longer in the sky. So I look at this and say 30, uh, Atlas 34 is going to transit at 2148. Well, I'm telling it to start at 2123. I might not want to do that. I might want to wait until it's already on the west side and then just track it down. But notice, I can go all the way till 4 a.m. tomorrow on this target if I'm tracking here. So those are the kind of things I can set up with my targets. If I want to set up then a sequence, so here's my target that's at almost nine hours right ascension, and maybe I would look at this target here and want to observe it afterwards. So I could actually move that down and put that below, and then I could start sequencing these. So you'll notice I can move this one in down the list until it's after 
34, and then potentially I could turn it on. And what I want to do now is basically reset the time gaps here. So I'm going to go back up to 34. I'm going to update. And notice what happened here. This one's going to go until it picks up, ending at about 17 um, after midnight. And my next target would pick up at that point. And again, I can study this mapping, see when it's going to transit, see when it's going to be available. And then I could start in on that target. Um, notice down here, we can observe in the blue filter and in the red, and this is actually a Johnson Blue and a Sloan R. Um, so I can set up any kind of sequence I want down here, and then I could loop that sequence so many times, and I'll work my way through the filters. So that's kind of a useful uh, tool for us. Okay, so let's go back and how we might set up an entire night. So these are kind of our targets. And so what I'd want to do is I would look here, and I would start my first target to get me going right at dusk. And now I'll notice my second target here has 2,200 times through its loop. So it's got very, very um, short exposures here. But I'm looking at this, and notice that tomorrow morning it would want to finish about 7 a.m., but dawn, astronomical twilight dawn, is somewhere about 540. So what I'd want to do is cut down the number of loops here. And let's go down to 2,000 loops, recalculate, updating it. Okay, that didn't take a lot off my list. So now I'm at 21. So let's take this down to 1,500 cycles and update. And now I'm at 450. So I'm just one of those I'm going to have to work on it, keep updating and trying to figure out, okay, so that's not too bad. Given some of the overhead and things, this is probably good. And so this, would, this sequence of two would start right at astronomical twilight. It would do the first target for however long here until a little after midnight. Then it would swing to the second target. In both cases, well, in the first case here, I would look and say, okay, this one is well, if I go back to Atlas 34, okay, it's still well above the uh, 30 degrees when it gets done. But look at my problem now with the second one. It's going to reach 30 degrees west at 442. So I am going to have to, this would be fine if I wanted to go all the way till morning, but I can't because it's going to reach 30 degrees before that. So again, I would cut this down. Let's go back to 1,500. And so now, well, not quite. I probably have to go a little bit under. So let's go to 1,400 and update. And if I do that, now I should get done before it reaches 30 degrees. And then I would know, well, I've got four hours, 32 here. I get till 540. So I have another hour. I could go through my targets that have been programmed in and add another target to my list if I wanted to. Um, there's a couple ways to add targets. If it's a known target with a known name in something like the Sinbad database, I can type the name in here and get the coordinates. If not, I can add by just hitting get, and then I'd have to manually load the RA and DEC in. But this is how I would set up a sequence for the night. And that's kind of important. The other thing we can do here is look at setting up the dusk flats and um, how to do that. So we can do that in a separate video here. And so we will stop this one for right now.